All right, 3.5 exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're about to get into some fun stuff. I really like doing this. I really like the, um, the exponential and the logarithmic equations. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, I hope that you enjoy them. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so first thing, we're going to start with talking about logarithmic equations. And it, logarithmic equations are a bit harder than exponential because you have to remember that logs have domain issues. So what's really, really important is that the inside of a log cannot be negative or zero. I'll write that here. So it's really important that when we get a final answer that we plug it back in to make sure that it actually works because there's a potential of getting an answer that actually doesn't work because it creates a domain issue. So that's something we're going to have to keep in mind. So with logarithmic equations, there's a bunch of different types, but if you have one that's set up like this where you could very easily change it into its exponential form, that oftentimes is the right way to go. So starting at the base across the equals back again, if we wrote this in exponential form, we would have 2 raised to the negative 4 is equal to x. And we're trying to solve for x here. Um, 2 to the negative 4 is going to be 1 over 2 to the 4th. And that's going to be 1 over 16. But before we can say that 1 over 16 is an answer, we need to double check back up in here and make sure it doesn't make the inside negative. So the inside is just x this time, and 1 over 16 is a positive number. So if we plug that in, we would have a positive on the, on the inside. So that answer will work. This one just needed to be positive. That's the only thing our answer there needed. All right, let's, let's go again. So the other thing here, um, so the base on this guy, it can't be negative or zero either. Now you don't run into a bunch of problems that are like this, but there's a few where you're solving for the base. And we can do the trick where we put it in its exponential form. So this is x raised to the 2 is equal to 100. So what number, when you square it, gives you 100? Well, 10 squared is equal to 100. So x needs to be 10. Now, this is a positive number. It's fine. You might also, at this step, take the square root on both sides. And when you do that, technically, you get the answer plus or minus 10. So technically, there are two answers here. But the minus 10, the negative 10, won't work because bases can't be negative. So that negative would just get canceled out immediately. And uh, we would only take the positive answer there. And it works in the base, so we're good to go. All right, let's start revving it up a little bit. So once again, we are going to start by putting this in exponential form. So across the start at the base, across the equals, back again. So this is 5 squared is equal to 4x plus 5. 5 squared is 25. And this is just a linear equation now. So I can subtract 5 off both sides to cancel the 5. So I've got 20 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. And we get that x is equal to 5. Now before we answer that, we're looking at this 4x plus 5, and we need to make sure it's positive when I plug in this 5 over here. So 4 times, and then... 5 plus 5 needs to be positive. So 20 plus 5 is greater than 0. 25 is greater than 0. Excellent. No domain issues. So x equal to 5 is our answer. Now, something I want to point out is that sometimes you can get a negative answer here that is a correct answer. It all depends on what happens inside of here. So if you can plug it into this and get a positive number out, then you're A-OK. -okay. Um, but if you plug it into this thing and get a negative, then you're not. 
but sometimes negative numbers, when they get plugged in here, make a positive number. Something to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this one with the same method we used for the previous ones. Start at the base, across the equals back again, and let's put it into exponential form. So the base is 1 half raised to the third power is equal to 3x minus 7. Um, 1 half raised to the third power, that's the same thing as cubing the top and the bottom. Equals 3x minus 7. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8 equals 3x minus 7. To cancel out the denominator, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 8, and that will cancel here. We'll just be left with a 1, and then distributing the 8, I get 24x minus 56. Adding 56 to both sides, I'm going to get 57 equal to 24x. Divide both sides by 24, and you get 57 over 24. I need to make sure that when I plug it into 3x minus 7, that it gives me a positive number. So 3 times 57 over 24, which actually can be reduced. This can be reduced down to uh, 19 over 8. Anyway, 57... Uh, 3 times 57 over 24 minus 7. Maybe I'll make this guy red to show that that's the number I plugged in. We want this number to be positive. Um, if you plug it into your calculator, the number you get should be like, um, I think it's exactly 0 0.125, which is positive. So we are A-OK. -okay. We can say 19 over 8 is our answer. Okay, this one looks a bit different. So this time we have logs on both sides. Something to talk about. If you have log base B of, I don't know, stuff over here, and it's equal to log base B of, maybe I'll make it circle stuff over here, it has to be true that these inside parts are the same. If there's, there's no numbers out front here, right? We're not, there's no numbers out front. Um, and it's just a log on each side, purely a log on each side, and their bases are the same, we need these two things to be the same as well in order for this equal sign to have meaning. Now, the technical reason for this is you can exponentiate both sides. So technically what you're doing is you're taking B and you're just making it the base here, and all of a sudden this whole thing becomes an exponent. So you make it both sides the exponent on B, and the b's would cancel, and you end up with that the inside is equal to the circle. So looking over here, we can't quite start with saying, oh, x has to be 16, because there is a 2 out front. The bases are the same, so we're good there. Um, but we do need to make it so that it's just log base 7. So this 2 can come up here using our, prop our log properties. So we have log base 7 of x squared is equal to log base 7 of 16. Now, really technically what we're doing here is we're taking 7 and we're making log base 7 of x squared the exponent. This is the only time I'm going to write this. And then we can cancel and get x squared equal to, these guys cancel, 16. If you take the square root on both sides, you need to remember to do a plus or minus. So we have x squared equals 16, so x is equal to plus or minus 4. Now we have to look and see if these numbers will work in our original equation. Not any form after that, but the very original equation. And I need the inside of this guy to be positive, and the negative won't work there. Because if I plug in the negative, I'll have 2 log 7 of negative 4 this is an issue because you can't have a negative in a log. So the negative won't work, but the positive number is fine. X is equal to 4, and we can call that an answer. All right, looking at another one. There's just a bunch of 
it's just a bunch of equations. That's the entire lecture is going to be a ton of equations. Now, you may be tempted to start this problem by bringing the 3 up and then making it into um, its exponential form, which in the end would end up looking like 2 to the 12 is equal to x plus 18 raised to the 3. And do you really want to have to deal with this? This, this, this is a kind of nasty looking um, equation. Probably not. But what we can do instead to get rid of this 3 in front, I notice that both sides are divisible by 3. So if I start by dividing both sides by 3, then things look a little nicer. So now it's equal to 4. And now doing your loop-de-loo will give you a little nicer thing, a little nicer setup. So you have 2 raised to the 4th is equal to x plus 18. 2 to the 4th is going to be 16. So 16 is equal to x plus 18. Subtracting that 18 on both sides, negative 2 is equal to x. Now, this, this looks like a bad answer because it's negative. But if you go up here and plug it in, so you're plugging negative 2 in to the inside, so negative 2 plus 18, that gives you 16, which is positive. So even though negative 2 looks like a problem, it's not because when you plug it in, it gives you a positive on the inside. So it's not causing any domain issues there. Okay, so let's make it a tiny bit harder here. It's not just a log on one side and a number on the other, but kind of like we did with the other problem, so this guy here where we divide it by 3, we can take care of this negative 7. We can add 7 to both sides here. And then we're just left with log base 4 of x plus 3 is equal to 2, which can be written uh, in its exponential form. So 4 squared is equal to x plus 3. 16 is equal to x plus 3. Subtracting 3 on both sides, 13 is equal to x, or x is equal to 13. I'm going to box that, but it's because I already looked up here and saw, well, if I plug in 13 plus 3, I get 16, which is a positive number. So that's not going to be causing me any issues there. So I can say 13 is my answer. Another thing you may want to do here, you may actually want to go through the whole process of plugging in to make sure that this statement comes out correctly. So if I'm checking, so negative, four, uh, negative 7 plus log base 4 of 13 plus 3 is equal to negative 5, hopefully. Negative 7 plus log base 4 of 16 is equal to negative 5. Log base 4, 16 is the same thing as 4 squared. So these log base 4 and 4 cancels, and we're left with just that exponent. So negative 7 plus 2 is equal to negative 5, and that's a true statement. So we can feel very confident in our answer now. All right, let's look at something more challenging. So in the previous problems, we were just dealing with one log, or the two, one time we dealt with two logs, it was just the log on each side. But if you look at this new problem, we have logs on each side and this one right here. So we need to figure out what to do. The best thing you can do is get, if you have a constant, so like just a number and then a log and then two different logs, it's best to get all the logs on one side. So on both sides, I'm just going to add log base 8 of 2 minus x. minus x and that cancels here. So we have log base 8 of x plus 7 plus log base 8 of 2 minus x is equal to 1. Now I want it to be something like log base b of x is equal to, I don't, I don't know, uh, m. <laughs> I want it to look like this so that I can rewrite it as b raised to the m is equal to x. But right now, I have two different logs. Thankfully, they're being separated by addition, which means that we can combine them together and just multiply these factors on the inside. So if we do that, we have log base 8 of x plus 7 
times 2 minus x equal to 1. Let's take this guy and expand him over here. So x plus 7 times 2 minus x. So foiling him, we have 2x minus x squared plus 14 minus 7x. So negative x squared out front, 2x minus 7x is minus 5x plus 14. So I'll replace that on the inside. And now let's write it in its exponential form. So start at the base across the equals back again. And like this whole thing is on the inside. So this is 8 raised to the 1 is equal to negative x squared minus 5x plus 14. This is going to end up being a quadratic. So 8 to the 1 is just 8. I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. So we get 0 equals negative x squared minus 5x plus 6. To factor the quadratics, we like to take that negative out if it's in the front. So if I take the negative out, I get x squared and then change all the signs, right? So plus 5x minus 6. And we are going to factor this. So this is the same as x plus 6 times x minus 1, which gives us x equal to negative 6 and x equal to 1. We need to check both of those answers in the very original equation. So we need to check it in here, so the inside of here and the inside of here, to make sure we don't get negative numbers. So why don't I erase this just to give myself some space here. So let's start with negative 6. So we would have log base 8 of negative 6 plus 7 equals 1 minus log base 8 of 2 minus negative 6. So this would be log base 8 of 1 equals 1 minus log base 8 of, this will be 2 plus 6, which is 8. Um, and both of these numbers on the inside are positive, which means that negative 6 is an answer. Let's check up with 1. So log base 8 of 1 plus 7 equals 1 minus log base 8 of 2 minus 1. Log base 8 of 8 equals 1 minus log base 8 of 1. And both of these numbers on the inside are positive. Which means 1 is an answer too. So we have two answers here x is equal to negative 6 and it's equal to 1 and both answers will work. All right so let's do an example with three different logarithms on it. Now there are two different ways you can go about this problem. Um, so we'll talk about both of them. The first method you could use is you could move all the logs to one side and then uh, change it to exponential form. So all LNs to one side and put in exponential form. So in order to do that, I would need to subtract the LN 16 on both sides. Just so we know, LN 5 minus LN 16 is not ln of 5 minus 16. You can't just um, do that subtraction on the inside. So this would turn into ln 5 plus ln of x plus 1 minus ln of 16 equal to 0. Right? And then we can use our properties of logarithm skills to combine this into one single logarithm. So 
5 is in the numerator, x plus 1 is in the numerator, and that's because they have positives in front. Here we have a negative, which means he's going to be in the denominator. So there will be a 16 down here, and it's equal to 0. So now this entire thing on the, is on the inside. Um, and ln is the same thing as log base e. So start at the base, across the equals back again. e raised to the 0 is equal to 5 times x plus 1 over 16. E raised to the 0, or anything besides 0, raised to the 0, is 1, times 5, or equal to 5 times x plus 1 over 16. We want to solve for x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 16 to get rid of the denominator. So now we have 16 is equal to 5 times x plus 1. Distribute, so 5x plus 5. Subtracting 5 on both sides, we'll get 11 is equal to 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and you'll get x is equal to 11 over 5. So all we need to make sure is that it's okay here, because that's the only place that would possibly have um, an issue, because that's the only place x is inside of a logarithm. Um, 11 fifths plus 1 is going to give you 16 fifths, which is positive. So this is a good answer. Now, the other way you could have gone about this is you could have just combined the logarithms on the left-hand side and then used the trick that we had right here, where if you have the same base on each side, you can just say that the insides are equal. And we could do that. So let's see, we have ln of 5 plus ln of x plus 1 equals ln 16. Combining together on the left side, we have 5 times x plus 1 is equal to ln 16. So it's just lns on both sides, which means I can just take the centers and set them equal to each other. So I have 5 times x plus 1 equals 16. And that's exactly where we were right here. And we'd get the same answer. So a little bit easier that way, but either way would get you there. All right, so more logarithms. Looking at this problem here, um, I, I wanna get it into, you know, the log base B of X is equal to, I don't know, I said M before, so I'll say M now. Um, we want it to be just one singular logarithm on that left hand side. So because they're being added, I can multiply them together on the inside. So I could have x plus 11 times x plus 7 equal to 5. Now last time we did this, let's see if I can find it. Last time we did this, I went ahead and expanded it first. Um, so I, we foiled them out first. That was just a stylistic choice. You don't have to foil first if you don't want to. You'll have to foil eventually. But if you wanted to wait to foil, you could do that. And we could do start at the base across the equal back again. This whole thing here is on the inside. Remember that. So this is 2 raised to the fifth is equal to x plus 11 times x plus 7. Right. And now... This is a 32, so the fifth is 32. I want to warn you that you cannot, at this step here, say, oh, well then x plus 11 equals 32, or x plus 7 equals 32. That doesn't work. So it has to be zero on one side for us to use that, that trick. So I have to foil out 
this side here and then make bring the 32 over and make one side zero. So I'll leave the 32 for a second. This will fact, uh, foil into x squared plus 18x plus 77. Subtracting that 32 on both sides. All right, so subtracting that, we get zero x squared plus 18x plus 45. This over here will factor into x plus 15 times x plus 3, which gives us x equal to negative 15 and x equal to negative 3. We have to take both those numbers and plug them in up here. So we only really need to plug them into the middle part and make sure that we get positive numbers. So let's do that. Let's start with x equals negative 15. For the x plus 11, it would be negative 15 plus 11, which is negative 4. And that would mean we'd have a negative inside, because that's right here. So we'd have a negative inside the uh, logarithm, and we can't have that. Oh no, so negative 15 won't work. I don't even need to try them over here because we already know that it won't work. Let's try negative three. So with x plus 11, this would be negative three plus 11, which is eight, so that's positive. Then I'm going to plug it into x plus seven. So x plus seven negative 3 plus 7, that's going to give me 4, also positive. So since both of those come out positive, negative 3 is our answer. So negative 15 could not be an answer because it made the inside of a logarithm negative, and we can't have negatives inside the logarithm. x equals negative 3 was totally fine because even though it's negative, when it gets plugged in, the insides don't become negative, so that's totally fine. So just one answer there, one of those answers doesn't work. So we've had problems where we have the log being multiplied right here. Sometimes there's subtraction. So we're going to do this the same way we dealt with over here, where there is an addition. But instead, because it's a minus sign, it'll be division. So this will simplify or combine into x plus 3 over x plus 5 equal to 1. Putting it in its exponential form. We have 2 to the 1 is equal to x plus 3 over x plus 5. To get rid of the denominator here, we're going to multiply by x plus 5 on both sides. That will cancel the denominator. So we have 2 times x plus 5 is equal to x plus 3. Distributing the 2, we have 2x plus 10 equals x plus 3. Subtracting the x on both sides, this will just be x over here. Subtract the 10 on both sides, you're going to get negative 7. So x is equal to negative 7. Now I can see some immediate issues. So you need to plug back into the logarithms. And if you do negative 7 plus 3, you get negative 4. So that's an issue. Um, and same thing here. And it doesn't, you don't need it to be both, but in this case it is. So let's plus 5 is negative 2. So that won't work. So that doesn't work at all. It was the only answer we had. So this is a no solution problem. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get an answer, but it doesn't work. So no solution. So some of the problems on Alex are going to have you giving answers where you're rounding to the nearest hundredth. Um, so let's kind of talk about what those answers are going to look like. This is a problem no different than the ones we've already seen. We're going to combine together the logarithms. So we have 5 times x minus 1 on the inside equal to negative 3. Now, in order to do the, you know, put it in exponential form, it can help to write this as log base e of 5 times x minus 1 equal to negative 3. 
so that you can do the start at the base across the equals back again. So e to the negative 3 is equal to 5 times x minus 1. e to the negative 3 is equal to 5x minus 5. Adding 5 on both sides, e to the negative 3 plus 5 is equal to 5x. And then we are dividing both sides by 5 here to get x is equal to e to the negative 3 plus 5 over 5. And I grab my calculator here. Let's see. e to the negative 3 plus 5 over 5. I am getting approximately, so I'll just give the full decimal expansion that I have here. So hundredths place is this place here. So you're looking at that third number to tell if you need to round up because that number is greater than five, it does round up. So this would be 1.01 .01 as our answer. Before we finalize it, we would wanna make sure up here that it works. And if you plug that in, 1.01 .01 minus one would give you 0 0.1, which is small, but it is still positive. So that will work. Technically, x is approximately 1.01. .01. It's not exactly. The exact number that it is is e to the negative 3 plus 5 over 5. This is its exact answer. This is its approximate answer. So that's logarithmic equations. The other part is exponential equations. So let's move on to exponential equations. The nice thing with exponential equations is you don't have to worry about domain issues because exponentials don't have domain issues. So you do not need to check your answer to make sure that it doesn't make an inside negative. With exponential equations, you just solve whatever answer you get, that's your answer, and you move on with your life. So with logarithms, we were able to put it in a more digestible form by making it into its exponential form. With exponential equations, we are already in exponential form, so it's not like we can make it better by moving to logarithmic, that doesn't make it better. So we have to figure out what we want to do here. Now, what I'll tell you is if you have a base and it's raised to some number and it's equal to another base, the same base raised to whatever else, then you know that these have to be, that this, these exponents have to be the same. Technically what you do is you take log base b of both sides so log base b of b to the square and then is equal to log base b of b to the circle. And then by our logarithm properties, these would cancel and you get square is equal to circle. But here are the things that need to happen. Both of these bases need to be the same and there can't be any other stuff happening on the outside. So we can't start yet until we get these guys to have the same base. So you're trying to look at each number and write them so that they have the same base. I happen to know that 64 is the same thing as four cubed. That's because I know my cubes. So I can write this as four raised to the x minus two is equal to four cubed. I now know, I now know that these exponents have to be equal. Sorry if I repeated myself there. I, I may have repeat, I had to pause my, my recording while my husband did some things. Um, so the exponents have to be equal. So x minus two is equal to three, adding the two on both sides, x is equal to five. We do not need to check for domain issues, so we can just say x equals five is our answer. Um, if you wanted to check it, you certainly could by plugging it into the original equation. So four raised to the five minus two equal to 64. This is four raised to the three equal to 64. And that's true, 64 is equal to 64. So we can feel confident in that answer. Let's look at one that's a little bit more difficult. So 64 was nice because it was a power of four. If I look at this guy, eight, is 16 is not a power of 8. So I have to look a little deeper and find out what they are both powers of. So 
I know that 8 is a power of 2, and 16 is also a power of 2. So 8 is equal to 2 cubed. 16 is equal to 2 to the 4th. I'm going to replace 8 and 16 with their representations that have the same base. So 8 gets replaced with 2 cubed, negative x minus 2, and then 16 gets replaced with 2 to the 4th. I need to make it so that there's just a 2 and an exponent is equal to a 2 and an exponent. So here, when you have exponents, it's power of a power, you multiply the exponents together. So I'm going to distribute the 3 to both of those. So this is 2 to the negative 3x minus 6 is equal to 2 to the 4. We can now say that these exponents are equal because it's 2 raised to an exponent and 2 raised to an exponent. So negative 3x minus 6 is equal to 4. Adding 6 on both sides, negative 3x is equal to 10. x is equal to negative 10 thirds. Once again, no domain issues with exponentials, so we don't need to worry about that. Now, if you wanted to plug the number in to check, we could do that. So we have 8 raised to the negative, negative 10 thirds minus 2 equal to 16. So I'm going back to the original up here. So 8 raised to the, that would make it positive 10 thirds minus 2 equal to 16. 10 thirds minus 2 is the same thing as 10 thirds minus 6 thirds. So that's 4 thirds. So 8 to the 4 thirds is equal to 16. And you would rewrite this as the cubed root of 8 to the 4th equal to 16. Um, but it can also be written, you can, you can interchange the exponent here, or you could plug it in your calculator, you could also do that. Um, but you can interchange the exponent and do it as the cubed root of 8 all raised to the 4th is equal to 16. The cubed root of 8 is 2, 2 to the 4th equals 16, and 16 equals 16. So, yay, it's the right answer. That is a little above and beyond, and you really could have at, I mean, this point right here, just put this, put this in your calculator and saw if you got 16. You would, and then you could say, oh, my answer's right. But, you know, it's fun to do it by hand sometimes. Let's do another example, and we're going to use the same tactic we used on our last example on this one. So we want to make the bases the same. Now, the numbers we're working with are 1 half and 4. So 1 half, I know, is 2 to the negative 1. And 4 is 2 squared. So I'm going to replace 1 half with 2 to the negative 1. And I'll replace 4 with 2 squared. So instead of 1 half, I will do 2 to the negative 1 raised to the 1 minus x is equal to, instead of 4, I'm writing 2 squared. Sorry, my dog's barking. So now we are going to multiply these together so that it's all one exponent. So that'll be negative 1 plus x. So what I did was negative 1 times 1 minus x. You get negative 1 plus x is equal to 2 squared. Now it's just a base and the same base on both sides. So we can set those exponents equal to one another. Negative one plus x is equal to two. Add the one on both sides and you get x equal to three. And that's your answer. So those examples were all fun, but it just was super convenient that it worked out um, that both sides you can make similar bases. Sometimes that doesn't happen. For instance, here, there is no number that I can write so that it's a power of that 15 is a power of it and 5 is a power of it. So I don't have the ability anymore to write them as bases and set the exponents equal to one another. I will need a new tactic. One thing I know is that if I have ln of x raised to the c, that this is c ln x. And it could be log base, whatever you want. I use ln because it's one less letter than log and two less characters than 
log base b. So I'm going to use lns, but I know that if I have an exponent on a number inside, on something inside of an ln, I can take that and put the exponent down in front. So I would be able to take this x minus 9 out of the exponent and put it in front as long as it was on the inside of an ln. To make that happen, I'm going to take ln on both sides. So ln of 15 raised to the x minus 9 is equal to ln of 5. Now I'm going to take the exponent down in front. It's really important when you do this that you put parentheses on it. So the entire exponent comes down x minus 9 ln 15 is equal to ln 5. We are trying to solve for x here. So you could divide by ln 15 right now. Um, I think what I'm going to do is instead distribute. So I'll distribute the ln 15 to both of these. I have x ln 15 minus 9 ln 15 is equal to ln 5. I will add the 9 ln 15 on both sides. I get x ln 15 is equal to ln 5 plus 9 ln 15. And then to get x by itself, I will divide by ln 15 so that these cancel. So x is equal to ln 5 plus 9 ln 15 over ln 15. Now, technically, you could combine the numerator, but 15 to the ninth power is going to be an incredibly large number, so uh, not quite worth it there. So good to just leave it in this form here. An exact answer means do not round. So this is an exact answer. An approximated number would be when you put this into your calculator and you get a decimal and then you round the decimal. That would be an approximated answer. This is the exact answer. So... Once again, the process we went through, take ln on both sides, and we did that because we couldn't make a similar base. Take ln on both sides, bringing the exponent down, distribute, and then solve for x. All right, let's look at another one of these where you can't make similar bases. And this one is one from Alex, and it had you rounding it to the nearest hundredth, so we'll talk about it. If you can't make similar bases, so e and 12 do not have a similar base, you're once again stuck with taking the ln on both sides or whatever base you want. ln works really good here, though, because this is a base of e. So if I take the natural log on both sides here, I have ln of e to the negative 6y is equal to ln of 12. Remember, ln of e raised to, it doesn't matter, x is equal to x. That ln e cancels itself out, and we're just left with this exponent. So negative 6y is equal to ln 12. To get the y by itself, I'm going to divide by negative 6 on both sides. You get y equals ln 12 over negative 6. You plug that into your calculator because it asked us to round to the nearest hundredth. So ln 12 over negative 6, and it gives me negative 0 0.414151183. Hundredth spot is right here. Next number is not greater than 5, so we won't round up. So we have negative 0 0.41 as our answer. If you wanted to try checking your answer, by plugging it into the original equation. So e to the negative 6 times y is approximately this. So we're not going to get exactly 12 out of this, but we're going to hope to get close. So when I plug that into my calculator, I get 11.70 blah, 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 doesn't matter. Uh, equal to 12, which isn't correct, but there was rounding that happened 
right here in the exponent. So this is, this is a rounded number. So 11.7 is close enough to 12 for me to feel like it's probably the right answer. So just so you know, you can check it even if you've rounded your answer. You can still check. All right. Just a few more examples, and then I promise it's over. Um, so I wanted to talk about two different ways that you could do this problem. My go-to is always taking ln on both sides if you're looking at an exponential problem, an exponential equation. Um, so if you took ln on both sides here, you'd have ln of 3 raised to the x is equal to ln of 7. This would allow you to bring your x down in front. So x, let's grab the blue pen, x ln 3 is equal to ln 7. Dividing both sides by ln 3 We're left with x is equal to ln 7 over ln 3. And this would be an exact answer, and we could box it and move on with our lives. However, if we wanted to be kind of tricky here, instead of taking ln on both sides, what if I had taken log base 3 on both sides? When I do this, remember, the log base 3 and base 3 here, they cancel and just leave the x left over. So we have x is equal to log base 3 of 7, and you're done. And in fact, although these answers look very different, they are the same answer. I didn't um, go over the change of base formula, but there is a formula that would you can change the base and it will turn into this. But it's a kind of nice trick that sometimes works kind of nicely, so keep that one in mind. Okay, this one and just one more after this, then you are done. We'll be over, I promise. So we have e raised to the x plus 5 equals 4. Because it's an exponential problem, I'm going to start by taking ln on both sides. So ln of e raised to the x plus 5 is equal to ln of 4. The ln e's cancel, and we're left with just that exponent. And that's x plus 5 is equal to ln 4. Subtracting 5 off both sides, this is ln 4 minus 5. And I want to kind of clarify, this is ln parenthesis 4 and parenthesis minus 5. Um, both of these answers are correct the way they're written. But to be very clear, you can't subtract the 5 from the 4 because the 4 is stuck inside of a logarithm. Um, an exact answer means don't plug it into your calculator, just leave it the way it is, and that's that for it. So not a, not a bad second to last problem. We'll do just one more problem, and uh, then, then it'll be that for this video. All right, this is going to end up feeling a lot like doing inverses for rational functions. The process is going to look very similar. I have x is stuck in the exponent, so to try to get those down, I'm going to use logarithms. I'm going to take ln on both sides to begin with. So ln of 2 raised to the x plus 1 is equal to ln of 5 raised to the 1 minus 2x. I can bring my exponents down in front. I need to remember to put parentheses on them when I bring them down because the entire exponent has to come down. Forgetting to do x, uh, parentheses here will ruin your entire problem for you and be a bad time in general. So I have x plus 1 times ln 2 is equal to 1 minus 2x times ln 5. So maybe looking a little familiar, so distribute the lns on both sides because we need to get the x's together and there's an x here and an x here so there's there's no way to get the x's all by themselves without first distributing then getting all the x's on one side and solving for x. So we have x ln 2 plus ln 2 is equal to ln 5 minus 2x ln 5. I'm going to take all the terms with x in them which are these two and put them on the left hand side and then anything that doesn't have an x in it, so this guy and this guy, it'll go on the right. So he stays, he moves. He stays, he moves. So 
adding 2x ln 5. And then subtracting this ln 2. Remember, this is not ln of 3. You can't do that. It's ln 5 minus ln 2. Don't combine them together. So I have x ln 2 plus 2x ln 5 equals ln 5 minus ln 2. And if it helps here, it's because these things canceled and these canceled. I'm going to pull out the x on the left-hand side because they both have x's, right? This one has an x. He has an x. So I can factor out an x, x ln 2 plus 2 ln 5 is equal to ln 5 minus ln 2. Then to get x by itself, I will divide by this entire ln thing. So ln 2 plus 2 ln 5 on both sides. These cancel. I get x is equal to ln 5 minus ln 2 over ln 2 plus 2 ln 5. You might ask if there's any combining that can be done. I mean, technically you can do a tiny bit of combining. I would leave my answer here if I were you, but technically the numerator could be combined into ln of 5 halves because it's subtraction. Down here, this could be combined into ln of 2 plus ln of 5 squared, because I could bring the 2 up as an exponent. So that's ln 2 plus ln of 25. And I could then combine them together and do ln of 2 times 25, which is ln 50. So if I was feeling really fancy, I could make it ln of 5 halves over ln 50. But that's about as... Uh, as complete as you can make it, as, as simplified as you can make it. And I would suggest not doing that. I would just suggest leaving it here. No reason to go the extra mile down here. Um, all right, so these problems are a little bit more difficult, but it really is just bring the exponent down, distribute, collect the x's, solve for x. So it's, it's not that bad. Um, I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, you're doing great. You listen to this whole video, which means you're a superstar. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the next video.